listening to your sport fans wherever you are. Good morning and welcome to today's edition of the program. Talk Sport coming away live and direct from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. Talk Sport is a program where we take a look at happenings in the world of sport. And of course, on today's edition of the program, we will be looking at the handwriting on the wall. Not too pleasant with sport followers talking about Super Eagles fans across the globe. It looks like there is something still needed before the team can make it to next year's uh, next uh, FIFA World Cup in America, Mexico, and Canada. Back home here, we'll be looking at preparation for the Ogun State next year's uh, uh, Nigerian National Sport Festival, plus plenty. My guest is in the studio. I'm talking about a diehard, if you want to say so, a lover of Chelsea. He loved the round later game. He's my guest. I'm talking about Mr. Chinedu Okechuku. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll be looking at uh, what position is Chelsea on the table. But our focus this morning is to find out how the Super Eagles can bounce back and take the leadership of Group Z. Talking about uh, the race for the 2026 uh, FIFA World Cup. The handwriting on the wall is not pleasant at all, if you ask me, but I hope we can get it. Let's take a break. When we come back, it's going to be much about the discussion on the Super Eagles' chances of qualifying for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Glad to have you back on the program. Talk Sport right here, Nigerian's capital city, Abuja. Talk Sport, we take a look at happenings in the world of sport. This morning, our focus is in Group C of the African qualifiers for the 2026 FIFA World Cup, where the Super Eagles of Nigeria are currently not occupying their desire. And of course, uh, what many in Nigeria believe that the Super Eagles haven't played two matches, a result of 100% is our desire. But unfortunately, the nation's uh, national football team has sent out uh, four points uh, in two games and are only having two points in two matches. A result not too good, and many have already started uh, 
saying uh, somebody uh, is, needs uh, uh, to be replaced. But let's come back home here and uh, look at uh, my guest who is here with me in the studio, uh, Chinedu Okechuku. You watch uh, the Super Eagles right at home here. We were at Uyo Stadium. We travel all the way to uh, Rwanda and the result, no much uh, difference. Uh, a disappointing outing if you ask me for the Super Eagles. Well, the truth is, um, it's been a thing of concern for a lot of Nigerians because uh, with the level that Nigerians, especially the Super Eagles, play, played in the past, we expect that they should even do better, especially in this stage of the tournament, in these qualifiers. But the way it has been so far, it's been rather disappointing, just like you said, and uh, a lot of people have had several concerns about the tactical play of these players and the discipline with which they play. It's really a thing of concern. I really wish they can qualify and um, do us good, especially in the next AFCON. Uh, but the way it is going, I really wish they can do something quickly about this so that we can guarantee a success, especially like in the days of uh, the late uh, the late coach of the Super Eagles, the last time that we got the 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 last time we were opportunity to win the last the Afcon and bring the glory to Nigeria. So I wish we can actually come up with something that would cause a change, especially in the tactical play. Yes, now Nigeria is not talking about uh, the African Cup of Nation. We are already true to the African Cup of Nation, and in three months' time or four months' time, perhaps uh, we will be fully in action talking about uh, Africa's 2024 African Cup of Nation. But we are looking at the Mondial, the World Cup, which we failed to qualify in the last edition, and it's very, very fresh in our memories for some of us here in Abuja that it was at the MKO Abuja National Stadium that the Black Stars denied Nigeria an opportunity to be in the FIFA World Cup. Now the right has started again. We are in a group that on paper, on paper, the Super Eagles should have maintained six clean points. You were playing at home. Mm. In fact, in the two matches, we were the one backing for draw. Wow. Lusueto scored in Uyo in our own home. Mm. And we went to Rwanda. Zimbabwe scored and we came back. In all the two matches, we were the one coming back. Mm. What are you seeing in the camp of the Super Eagles? Well, the truth about uh, success is Success is all about good preparation. If we are not getting the results, especially when we have to play, it means that we are not preparing well enough. So they need to go back to the drawing board and see how to make things work because we have lost the last, in the last preparations for the World Cup. And this time again, it's going to be a big blow to us if we don't qualify for the World Cup. So I feel they should go back to the drawing table and look at where they are not getting things right. Do we still have space in the table? <laughs> it looks like the entire board is filled. Because I thought we, I thought by now we should have learned a lesson. We went to the African Cup of Nations. Okay. We were sent packing at the group stage. Okay. Some would say knockout stages. Okay, fine. But Nigeria to see the exit door at that stage of the level, neighboring Cameroon, wasn't good for us. Mm. The World Cup right here in Abuja, on our own hands, we let it go. Now we have started. Six points, South Africa is currently topping the group. Wow. And then we will go back and start saying, should South Africa lose? Should Zimbabwe do this for us to qualify when we have all the opportunities? Mm. What went wrong at home? Many say the Uyo Township Stadium, named after the Senate President, is the winning ground for the Super Eagles. Yeah, right. But in this case, we were coming behind to even beg for a draw. Wow. And the fans were highly disappointed. What should we do? What advice do we put in front of the present leadership of the Nigerian Football Federation? And of course, uh, Senator John Owen Enno, the Honorable Minister of Sport. What should be the message? Because Nigerians are smelling something wrong. Wow. We must qualify in the World Cup. It's our bad right. Having won the African Cup of Nations a record of three times. But with the signals we are seeing on the board now, it looks like if something drastic is not done, Nigeria may fail to qualify for Canada, Mexico, U.S. 2026. Well, I think it's a big call for the football body, the Nigerian football body, to look into the issues that are causing these lapses, especially with the shortfall of success as far as this qualifier is concerned, and do the right things. If they feel 
the coaching crew is not competent enough, they should look into the main issues because we can't afford to lose at this time. We can't afford not to go to the next World Cup. They should just do what is best to be done for us to guarantee not just our qualification, but also a good run in the Mondial in the World Cup. Pensero was given a job as the coach of uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria with the target of qualifying us for the African Cup of Nations, which he did. Now, the issue of a uh, cut pay came on board. He wasn't forced to accept the cut pay. The economic, everybody has seen the situation all over the world. He had an agreement with the Nigerian Football Federation to have a cut pay, okay. which means he was not forced, which means he was doing what he felt it was right for him. But the results we are getting, should we implement the normal principles of sports that if you fail to, to deliver, you should be kicked out? Should we start singing that music now? Is it too early with two matches? Well, the truth about any organization is someone said everything rises and falls in leadership. If things are not working, they should check out from the leadership stage, especially with the issue of uh, our coach, the coach of the Super Eagles. They should task him. We heard some rumors like um, checking out his credentials. He was not really employed based on merit. Well, perhaps those are rumors. But I've seen some people that may not even have up to his credentials, but they were able to bring success to beer, especially when it mattered. So I believe that the football-making body, of course, at this time, should check out do their uh, homework very well and find out where the lapses are coming up so that we can have a good success. We were told that the coach has a challenge of surplus in demand, which means he has so many players. And of course, we've seen a lot of Nigerian players excelling at the club sites. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem at home? Because a Nigerian should not complain about the pitch in Uyo. You can't say that. That's the only pitch we have. Approved by FIFA. And so if we play a game, play another country, and they are excelling in that very pitch, there's something wrong. Now, where are all the stars that have been doing the magic at their club side? Fine and good. Victor is, of course, uh, out of it for some time now because of injury, but we are told that he's coming back. Should we put all our basket just to one player? If Useme is not there, nothing happens. If Taiwo is not there, nothing happens. For a country that has over 250 people, we can't put a team that will conquer Africa as we used to do. Nigeria is a powerhouse. Well, I, each time I look at the table, I feel bad for Nigeria. That South Africa, Bafana, Bafana is topping. Well, I've never believed in the jinx of uh, complain about a pitch or a stadium, as it were. <laughs> then secondly, if we have a bundle of talent, it's a plus to us. It shouldn't be a negative, uh, a negative something pulling out negative results for us. I think it has a lot to do with the coach knowing what to do. Talking about tactical play on the field of play is very important. You know, when you introduced me, you said I'm a lover of the Chelsea Football Club. Imagine what they played out the last time they played against Man City. A lot of Chelsea fans have always complained about the Chelsea Football Club. They've not been bringing in the needed results. And trust me, they've, they've done a lot of spendings, even to the tone of one, one, billion, uh, one, billion, uh, one billion pounds, so to speak. Yeah. And so far, you can't tell me they don't have several talents. But it was a case of knowing the right tactics to use in every <coughs> match. And they were able to come and bring that result to bear against Man City, especially in the last match. So I think bundles of talents are a plus to us. So the coach should be able to know what to do, how to play these bundles of talent to produce the needed result, whether Osima is there or not. So if he cannot bring in the desired result, then I think they need to look straight into who can deliver this tactical play for us that will guarantee success. We are looking hard to bounce back. Uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria currently standing behind South Africa in the race for 2026 FIFA World Cup. The situation has not gone down well with millions of Nigerians all over the world. When we come back with our guests, we will be looking at uh, perhaps the various departments. Uh, there is a finger against uh, the goalkeeping uh, department. When we come back, we'll look at that and perhaps uh, find out if Chelsea is really on.
on the track. Is it because they played a four-all draw against uh, almighty Manchester City and Chelsea fans feel uh, they are getting it right? Where are they on the table? When we come back, my guests will be exiting all this and of course we'll have a lasting solution to the drilling and poor performance of Nigerian number one football team, the Super Eagles. Please don't go away. Glad to have you back on the program. Talk sport right here in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. Today we are taking a look at the poor situation of the start for the 2026 of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Before the two World Cup matches, the Nigerian Football Federation said they were using uh, the preliminary qualifying matches for uh, the World Cup as a test uh, for the 2024 African Cup of Nations, which kicks off in January next year. If everything on that goes down well, then Nigeria must have to reposition itself again uh, to do well in the African Cup of Nations because if this is a test, then we should start putting our house together. Talking about teams that have excelled in the race for 2026 FIFA World Cup, of course, you know, the Egyptians have won their straight through matches with Saleh scoring four goals in a game. And of course, uh, we saw Africans uh, uh, defeating their opponent by nine goals to nothing and Super Eagles backing for a two-all draw even at home. Let's look at the goalkeeping department. Many believe that since Inyama left the national team, it has been quite challenging for us to have a superb uh, goalkeeper for the Super Eagles. Well, um, it's a sad truth, but I can tell you categorically it's a truth because since Inyama left, you've had the likes of uh, Dele Ayenuba and the, and the rest, uh, Ezoho and the likes. But the truth about it is we have a bunch of goalkeepers in that department. So they should run a check, do a proper audition for these guys there, and pick out the best. If anyone messes up, he needs to wait on the benches, wait on the sidelines, and watch out another person. And at the end of the day, we'll see who comes out best. This selection of goal, the goalkeeping department should not be based on sentiment at all if we must achieve success, especially in every of our matches. It's very important. A lawyer who is the man in charge of the goalkeeping department of the Nigerian Football Federation. He is a member of the technical committee and of course he was one time one of the best uh, hands for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Recently his choice uh, of goalkeeping, although the coach has the final say, but should we say that much is expected from Aloy Agu, who is in charge of the technical, the goalkeeping uh, department of Nigeria? That area seems to be wanted. But if you say the goalkeeper is not good, it means the strikers should also score goals and let them score. But in this case, the strikers are not scoring. So why are you blaming only the goalkeeper? It looks everything they need total overall. Well, the teamwork yes. encompasses the goalkeeping department, mm. the defense lineup, yes. and also the strike force. Now, I've always told people, when you see teams win matches, yes. one of the bulk, most of the bulk of the work is in the defense department. They help shield and cover up the goalkeeping department. Then also, you've also hit the nail on the head. The strikers should always score. If we score more goals, we shouldn't be so worried about maybe conceding as little as maybe just one go. So it's also a wake up call for our strikers to do their best. Even if Osime is not there, Osime is, shouldn't be uh, the, the main thing about the Super Eagles football team. Others are there and they are doing well in their club sites. So they should wake up to the task and bring the needed results. It's very important.
Let's go back home and look at the CAF award and uh, look at individual uh, uh, players. You talked about uh, uh, Victor Sibe. Of course, we also talked about uh, uh, Hamid Saleh of uh, of uh, of Egypt. And CAF says uh, uh, the award for the 2023 uh, African Football of the Year ends in December. Now, Osime has not been in action. No thanks to the injury he got in our last uh, friendly against uh, Saudi Arabia, in which uh, uh, we had a draw, a two-all draw. Now, Saleh is still superb in his club side and at national assignment. And Osime now, uh, at the national as as assignment, he has not been there because of injury. Do you think Osime has a position, has placed himself to take over the leadership and be awarded the CAF African Football of the Year 2023? Looking at what is happening from players like uh, Saleh in, in uh, Liverpool. Well, challenging enough, you know, when they have to take such, bring up such lists and come up with such final results. Can you make the top five? It's the last principally five. <laughs> based on performance. Yes. And of course, just like you said, the injury that he has suffered, in a short while now, we pray that he comes, he comes back from that injury quite early enough. Even though I think he has, he has performed well over a while, even before the injury actually struck. So they would also check such results before the injury. But we pray that he comes back after the, uh, soon, soon enough during this injury so that it will help him also have a good place in the ranking. Else, we, the selection purely is not based on sentiment. They'll be looking at your performance and it will be completely performance-based. So I can't tell whether he's going to be on the list, but quite enough. He has done very well before the injury. So I think he should make the list. Our own Victor Sime was shortlisted among uh, the players uh, uh, by the Continent Football Governing Body Cup. Our hope uh, is that he mixed uh, the top five, uh, which uh, will go for the last uh, voting. The voting will be done by selected uh, journalists and uh, coaches and captain of national team. I hope uh, he has one vote already in the country and, of course, uh, the coach. Now, let's come back here and look at uh, injury uh, in some African players who came back home to honor uh, their fatherland. A big blow for Manchester United. It looks like um, Onana uh, is injured yeah, and may not be for Man City. Mm. And uh, Man City, the entire show that uh, is on Onana. Yeah. Wonderful goalkeeper, but uh, is not doing much as far as Man, Man U is concerned. Well, so far, uh, I wouldn't like to go into the ego keeping saga as far as Man United is concerned. So I don't. <laughs> I don't arrive, Russ. <laughs> I don't arrive, Russ. I don't. I don't have to get more enemies than friends. Uh, though Onana has been quite good, but just like I told you, mm. it's important for a goalkeeper to be at his best. But sometimes the defenders also help make the goalkeeping department quite easy. It's quite unfortunate that he's been injured so far, but we don't know the extent of the injury. We don't know if he's going to be staying so long out of the pitch or it's going to be a short one. But I hope it's going to be a short one so that he gets back on goal. But I think they have a formidable second-choice goalkeeper. So it's not everything about goalkeeping department that forms the team. Uh, so that's how it plays out in every team. So I wish Man United all the best. We'll come back to Chelsea, but let's look at uh, African players uh, shortlisted uh, to come back home and honor their African, uh, their fatherland, uh, for, of course in Ghana, maybe their motherland. Let's look at uh, some of these players that have been penciled down for the World Cup and their primary assignment and the club engagement. With these signs of injury, you think clubs are willing to let go some of these players in January window for Cup of Nations? That has always been a serious saga. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is... So that you come here and not get injury. <laughs> and that's what we pray for. <laughs> but if you check out, most coaches, mm. especially when they have performing players, top class performing players, if they have such kinds of players, if you ask them deep down from their hearts, they won't want to release such players for such mondials or for such invitations, especially when their nations or their countries are actually needed to come and perform at such times because they are always scared of that number one issue and that is getting injured during such mondials. But we can't take it away from this. Uh, that's why sometimes I always add... Uh, 
the, the, the aspect of praying for them so that they don't get injured, so that they can keep performing whether at home or at their club site. But you can't take it away. That's the game of football. Like the expectation is always very high. Like for us now, Nigerian, we will expect that all our players will come out back and play their best for us to qualify for the World Cup and win the Cup of Nations. Uh, we wouldn't want to give any honor to their club side. But on their club side now, they will say, we pay the highest wages. Should this player... But FIFA rule says you must give 45% to your country of origin. And looking at some of these, because some time ago, uh, we heard uh, the Chelsea uh, side complaining that each time these players are released on national assignment, they lose a lot of them on injury and sometimes they are not fit to continue. So what should be? Should there be break during the Africa Cup of Nations or should there be break the way we have uh, when we're playing the matches? Of course, every uh, player had gone home and Europe, they were playing for Europe 2024. Africa was playing for the African Cup of Nations uh, qualifier. So should we have such a period, like a one-month break where all football should be paused and go back to your continent? Well, that's a good decision anyway if they can, if FIFA can contemplate that. But the truth about it is, is these things have always been, and that's the reason why for every team you have as much as 22 players <laughs> to pick from. So we don't pray that they get injured, but in a case where such things happen, it will be a good opportunity to try out some other players and see how good they actually are. You may not be able to tell who is the next person, the next talent that will come up and pull out such good levels of success at the level of play. Uh, so I think it's something that has been, and they should just look out a way to make sure they get the best out of such challenges or such situations. Chinedu Okechuku is my guest on the program this beautiful morning, right here in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. We are looking at uh, issues concerning the development and progress of Nigeria's number one team, the Super Eagles. Having won the African Cup of Nations a record of three times, it appears the Super Eagles must bounce back on their feet uh, to avoid what happened in Qatar when our beautiful green, white, green flag was not seen in Qatar. Our hope and our prayers is that Mexico, Canada, United States 2026 FIFA World Cup. We should be there. But starting on a disappointing note, everyone needs to be on deck. When we come back, we'll be looking at uh, issues concerning the developmental uh, aspect of football in the country and the home based players. How many home based players were in the national team? Let's come back. My guest is still here with us right here on Talk Television, Nigerian capital city, Abuja. Don't go away. <laughs> I strongly believe that you are tuned to Global Television and the program is TalkSport right here in Nigeria's capital city. We are excited to let you know that action will resume in the English Premier League, the Spanish La Liga, the German Border Ligas, as well as the Italian Serie A, and not forgetting the French League 1 and 2. So African players who came home for the African qualifiers for the World Cup should be expected in their various clubs. My guest here is a strong member of the Blues and they are I cited that they pull a four-all draw with a team called Manchester City defending champion. To them, record-making is always making reference on that game. Mr. Chinedu, let's look at um, the English professional football league. You are a lover of the Blues. Looking at the top ten, uh, is Chelsea among the top ten? Yeah, Chelsea is among the top ten. Okay. And, um, the top five, Nko? <laughs> <laughs> they are not yet okay. in the top five. Okay, there's hope. When you say they are not yet, there's hope. Yes, okay. there is hope. Because, okay. you know, uh, they are just new crop of players, starting with a new coach. So it takes some time for the coach to be able to 
implement his philosophy. And should, they on uh, should they go on re regulation so that they can be able to stabilize and bounce back? <laughs> I think that was a bit sarcastic <laughs> from you. <laughs> okay, the okay. Truth is, right from when they started playing mm. under Pochettino, I saw the positive sign. Okay. Especially before the season kicked off in the preseason stages. Okay. They played quite well, they played as a team. So for me, even the, uh, in the subsequent games that they are yet to play, I don't really expect so much from them. But if the bonding can continue, if they can play more as a team, I think there are chances that they would even make a top five. Yeah, you talked about the last match that they played against Man City. The truth about it is, if not for the bad officiating, they would have actually won the match. But in spite of that, I still how could want to you, give them... How could you have won a match when several in several occasions you came behind to pull for a draw? It was 4-3 and then you happened uh, to, to score an equalizer, right? The reason I said that is okay. especially for the first goal, even for most of the fans. So you're faulting the goalkeeper or the coach or the referee? The referee. The referee. The referee. On behalf of Chelsea? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. The truth is I'm trying to imagine how... Someone as small as Kukurela will be able to bring down Haaland in that occasion. Did he dive? Is I that what you're say saying? He dived. Okay, so what happened? What actually happened was it was Haaland mm. and his weight mm. that pulled down Kukurela instead. <laughs> but the referee, on going to uh, the television <laughs> yes. upon the VAR score <laughs> yes. on that particular situation, <laughs> felt because they saw his hand. He felt or he saw. Under he so, felt or uh, he saw? Uh, he, he felt based on what he saw. Yes, based so on what? Based on the reality on the pitch. The footage there was a reality on the pitch. No, he saw based on the position of Kukurela's hand. Okay. But if you look at it objectively, mm. it was Alan that actually pulled Kukurela down instead. But I won't want to go into... Are you saying because of his size? Because uh, we yes. are all aware of the story in the Bible where David... Made history by killing Golera. <laughs> from what you saw in that game, from the position of yeah. a Chelsea, or oh, sorry, of a yes, of a Chelsea fan, yeah. he wasn't f to be blamed. Yeah, thank you for bringing that illustration about David and Goliath. In that situation, yes. Haaland was the Goliath. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine how David, if they had to <laughs> do a physical battle, yes. there was no way David could have pulled down Goliath. That was actually what happened in the field of play. Kukurela was not at fault at that time. So you're saying there wasn't a penalty? It wasn't supposed to be but, a penalty. But your goalkeeper was also on pole. He should have stopped it. It's no. not as good as a, a goal stopper. Of course, you know how penalties are. Okay. Penalty is a 70 30 mm. thing. And of course, you know, Haaland is a good penalty taker. So, apart from that, I want to praise their pattern of play. That was what I was very comfortable with. They didn't give Man City so much respect. They were able to play very well as a team and they pulled a great shocker to Man City. And of course, if you see. What's the shocker? What's the shocker? To Man play City for all? expected them. <laughs> Over the years, Chelsea has been... A baby to Man City. I, exactly. I want you to pronounce that word. <laughs> Chelsea has always been the underdogs. Okay, had always been. Okay. <laughs> yeah, had always been the underdogs. And they play this kind of defensive play, showing so much respect to Man City. So they expected, Man City expected on that day that it was going to be the same business, business as usual. As usual. <laughs> but they saw something different on that day. And of course... Kudos to the likes of James, Dries James. Kudos to the likes of Sterling. They were absolutely outstanding. And not forgetting Kobe Palmer in that match. It Fantastic. Was absolutely. Fantastic. Thriller. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the top three. Yes. Tottenham is really, really doing good. Mm -hmm. And it looks like City has taken over what belongs to them. Okay. Does it belong to them? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, as defending champion, they are back on uh, the lock. But Tottenham is giving a strong fight. Do you think at the end of the day, Tottenham can be able to overtake and maintain what they started at the beginning of the season? Is there any chance for Tottenham? Talking about Tottenham, mm. I feel there is a big doubt with respect to them coming back to the top of the table. Ask me why. I think when Chelsea had uh, their own match against Tottenham, I discovered something very paramount. Talk about the player called Madison that plays the attacking 
Uh, the attacking midfield. It's the engine room. Yeah, it's the <laughs> engine room of yeah. Tottenham. Yes, yes. And the moment they took him out of that match, mm. I remember talking to my wife when we were watching the match together. She's also him, a fan of Chelsea. Yeah, she's a Chelsea fan. Oh, lovely, lovely. <laughs> I told her immediately. Madison was taken out of the pitch. I told her this game is as good as lost by Tottenham. But if Madison, I can guarantee, if Madison was still in that match. Else, apart from that injury, if he was not injured and he was still in that match, even with the nine players that they played against Chelsea, they would have still been able to pull up a beautiful fight. Trust me. So now that he's injured, he is the engine room of Tottenham. It's going to be a big challenge for the Tottenham side to get back to the top of the table. Trust me. Let's look at the, the top uh, four teams. Uh, Liverpool, Asna is not there. Yes, uh, Aston Villa. Uh, looking at the four top, um, do you think the league will end this way or could there be any shocking surprise, any team to overtake any? Well, when it comes to football, you mm. can't take away the place of surprise. Do you see Chelsea football. there? Uh, what Ch magic? Chelsea, Chelsea may not be. Oh, may not be there. May not be in the top four. Okay. We are not expecting okay. so much of a miracle from them. Okay. But if it comes, why not? <laughs> you understand <laughs> me? But... Of course, you can't guarantee the guys there right now mm. to remain all through the season. It's a competition. Chelsea has done that for quite some time. Uh, sorry, Man City has done that for quite some time. Yeah. And, uh, they so are still far, they've been leading. the most consistent team over the years. Is it their right? Uh, not really because it's their right. <laughs> Performance-wise. You know, yeah, it's purely based on performance and the coaching, as I would say. The coach, as he will say, my guess right here, we are taking a look at uh, the development uh, across the country, football. But let's look at when somebody says he's a fan of a club, yeah. especially a fan of a club that is not domiciled in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? What type of things do you do that <laughs> qualifies you a fan when we have our own clubs here? And what are you doing as a person? Because I need to put you on the hard seat this morning. Why a fan of a Chelsea foreign club? How many fans, or what is your local club here that you are really putting so much to develop like the Chelsea club? Well, the truth is, if you check out the way the promotions, the, 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 the level of respect that mm. is accorded to such teams in such countries, mm. the situation back home here is quite different. But I can tell you, if they can borrow some of the... Uh, hyping the promotional uh, 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 ways that they well up their teams over there, back in our country, then gradually we'll begin to put hope. Then we'll begin to build trust and begin to have a good fan base with respect to the clubs in our country back home. Now, when you talked about who is really a fan, mm. okay, it's just like in partnership. Yeah. Back in school days, we okay. talked about a dormant partner and an active partner. Yes. A lot of fans that I've seen... But you are not dormant. Uh, because even I, your wife <laughs> is would, also a fan. You must be an active one in that me, matter. Permit me <laughs> to classify myself still as a dormant partner. Really? Because active partners are those who have been able to register okay. with the club. Okay. So they've been able to put in a level of commitment okay. to be part and parcel of the club. Mm. So those ones that are paid or registered of putting a level of commitment that is demanding because they have uh, uh, prerequisites into being how to be a real partner yeah. uh, or how to be a real fan. <laughs> uh, let me put it that way. So those who have actually gone to taking that level of registering for those clubs to become their fans, uh, active fans. But those who have not, they just derive pleasure watching that club play and they just want to be a part and parcel of that club. Don't forget, football okay, is a game okay. of fun. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes. How can we get 50% of your dominant rule in our domestic league? Just 50%. I'm not asking of 100%. What you are currently doing, how can we get a little of that to promote our own games in the country? Besides advert we you have talked about promotional aspect. What else should be done to reposition the Nigeria Professional Football League? 
Well, uh, sad enough, I wouldn't have been. Able, I wouldn't have loved to say this on air. You understand? But we've heard of cases of uh, maybe companies putting in their funds into a local leagues and the funds were mismanaged. We didn't really hear what happened about the funds. You hear about the way. Uh, 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 a home win the, symptom. The, the, exactly. <laughs> home win syndrome. That's a big one. Uh, I, once, when I heard that... I but that watched, has stopped. That has stopped. I'm sure the, the present leadership of the Nigeria uh, Premier League, uh, we have not recorded uh, such a way, uh, win syndrome. Uh, it's quite some time. The level, the degree to which it has stopped, mm. you wouldn't say it's completely abolished. <laughs> If you look deeply into it, there's still some traces of such things in the officiating. Uh, you talk about the medical staff of some teams, mm. uh, the way med, uh, medical, medical department is handled in our football. It's not really good enough. The way their remuneration. All are you things. saying? Are you yes. saying that why no Nigerian referee was penciled down uh, for the 2024 uh, uh, FIFA African Cup of Nations is as a result of poor officiating back home here? Um, Could you trace that to that? Truly speaking, such short listings mm. are actually done based on merit. Okay. So if they want to find themselves in the bigger stages, they should not just study wide. They should find out what it takes to get there hmm? and do their best to get to that level. Doing their best to get to that level, we need to commend the present uh, Minister of Sport, John Owen Eno, uh, who felt it was wrong uh, for CAF to deny Nigeria officiated in Africa's most prestigious uh, 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 football uh, tournament. To that end, the Minister has taxed uh, the Referee Association of the Nigerian uh, Football Federation to do everything possible and ensure that Nigerian referees uh, are given their due respect and due invitation to participate of course we are celebrating because the ladies are there two nigerian ladies were invited to be part of uh, the qualifiers and uh, we hope to see more ladies and more men taking the center stage let's come back uh, home here and look at uh, the two teams uh, the male and the female uh, the female are doing everything possible it's most likely they are 99.9 percent .9 to qualify for the olympics as well as colombia 20 uh 24 under 20 women championship the girls are already uh, about 80 percent close to it but looking at the super eagles if you want to invest mr chinudu where will you put your resources these two teams some argue that the nation's uh, football uh body has grown has developed but the ladies have won the championship a record of nine times they are they started very late meanwhile the men have been there we can only boast of uh, three times can you compare uh, the results should we compare the results first of all well, the truth about the question you asked yes. go straight to the question you asked where okay. would you probably like to invest <laughs> or place your eggs in mm. the truth is everyone in life wants to always associate themselves with success okay and these girls have done it again and again. If you check out the percentage rate of success, mm. comparing our men, our men's team, and the female team, of course, the female team have always given us more levels of success than the men. So, of course, you should know where by investment would like to go. But you see that uh, male-female syndrome, especially with the the way things are handled in Africa is something we need to deal with. Uh, but so far, these girls have been doing pretty well, trust me. But I feel that uh, there are some missing, uh, missing pieces of the puzzle, especially with respect to the men's team. And I feel if those things are fixed, uh, talk about the times of Stephen Okechukukechi coaching the national team things worked and some other coaches like that who have done pretty well for the national team especially on the men's side i hear that uh, one time minister said it's good to spend money with uh, the ladies because less have money and a bigger result unlike uh, the big boys who stroll in to come and perhaps uh, sometimes this result hardly come but let's come back home here and look at um, uh, the level of uh, the development of uh, uh, the Nigeria Professional uh, uh, Football League. Uh, of course, uh, we are all aware that uh, these players are supposed to have been 
uh, as screened, nurtured uh, at our domestic league so that they can make the national team or go out of the country as professionals. Looking at the present 20 clubs at the Nigeria Professional Football League and compared to what is happening out of the country, I'm talking about Africa. What else do you think should be in place to put our league top where foreigners can come and participate in the Nigeria Professional Football League? What should we do if given the opportunity to advise the NFF and its members? Yeah. Um, apart from the promotional side that I talked about earlier, I think sincerity, a lot of sincerity, should come into the football. Okay, a lot of sincerity should come into the game of football, especially as it relates to the football governing body. They should be sincere to people who are their partners, their promoters, and the likes, uh, to make sure that whatever comes in. There's so much sincerity with the way the football is run in our local leagues. Then I also think meeting with specific stakeholders can help them because, you know, ideas that run on one head mm. is not strong enough. So you may have to bring in, have regular meetings with stakeholders time and again so that they also give you their inputs. Of course, someone said two heads are better than one and that's how success actually plays through in the real world. Okay, your final take for fans of Chelsea who are watching this program. They want to hear you make a comment. Chelsea fans. Okay, my final advice to all <laughs> Chelsea fans is, yeah, I know we did well in the last match, but don't expect so much success in the forthcoming matches because they are still in the building process. That's what I see. So I think we are bonding very well as a team. We are playing very well as a team. But it takes some time to imbibe the philosophy of the coach. And I think that is what is ongoing. So with time, I know that Chelsea are going to play one of the European championships this year. Any assurance for millions of Nigerians who are not too happy with the present uh, position of the Super Eagles uh, for the race for the World Cup? Well, there are no shortcuts to success, just like I said earlier. The truth about it is, is, if you want success, do what it takes to get success. So my encouragement to every of the fans is, if the football governing body can put the right things to play in perspective, they should find out what really is the problem and fix the needed problems. Let there not be issues of non-payment. <laughs> let, let there not be issues. But they're not owing the players. They're they not owing the players as we speak. The yeah. president uh, NFF has paid the players all their match bonuses. Okay. Whether lose or draw or win, they're not owing them. Okay, I'm just itemizing <laughs> all the necessary factors mm. that can lead to shortfall. Are success. the factors? Are the factors? We don't think they are factors. Now. We think they should go there and win the matches. Okay. So, <laughs> they should look out if it's the coach that is mm. the problem. They should find out if the coach is not good enough to take these boys and look for a solution, as it were. If things can be put in proper perspective, I believe the successes can begin to come. That's how far we can go on today's edition of the program. Talk Sport right here on Global TV. Wait for the Super Eagles of Nigeria to bounce back and fly high. The nation's flag uh, when German, when America, Canada, and Mexico will stage uh, the FIFA World Cup. And of course, uh, word of encouragement on the development of our, our local league. My guest has been Chinedu Okechuku, giving us insight, analysis on the way forward. Until we come your way again tomorrow, same time, same station, right here on Nigeria's capital city. My name is Agbo Clinton. And you thank you very much for finding time to join us on today's edition of the program. Until then, do have a wonderful sporting day ahead of you.